Now that users can be added to our backend, we need a way for them to uh, authenticate into our backend with a login process. So we're going to go ahead and create a login Lambda function that users can use and that the username and password will be submitted to from our front end. With our bootstrapped function created, let's go ahead and start creating our function. Going to our login a Lambda function here, I'm going to start looking at authenticating users, but I also want to create a schema for what users can submit. And essentially these submissions, because this will also be a post request, the schema submitted will be the same as the create user request schema. So I'm essentially going to copy and paste and rename this. And just change the schema name. That's really the only changes I need to make. I'm also going to go to my service.yaml file now to hook up the login event, the HTTP endpoint to my Lambda function. Because it's so similar to the create user, I'm going to just copy and paste that for now and just make the small changes that I need, such as adding login to the path. This is an action performed on a user. So I'm going to create a login endpoint. And I'm also going to change the schema here to match the new one I just created. Right, so with those basics out the way, in those few seconds, I've gotten an endpoint hooked up to a Lambda function and gotten a validation schema applied. Now let's just add the logic to our Lambda function. Right now we've gotten up until, up until this point where we've taken the data received in our post request. We've query, we're querying our table to username uh, record that we've stored. We confirm where we running the request through a try and catch block and returning an error if there was some error from DynamoDB. Otherwise, we go ahead and check to make sure that we have at least one result returned, which would be our uh, correct username. And then we compare use bcrypt to compare the stored pass the, the sent password with the stored password successful, we need to return something. And what we want to return here is something called a JWT. This is a token that uh, is going to be sent back to the user. And this token is going to be then submitted by the user uh, on further requests later. And this is how we can authenticate a user for further API requests later in this course. Uh, the JWT that we're going to pass back here is going to be a very simple one. 
but we do need to add another node module here to help us build the JWT nice and easily. We're going to our command line and we're going to add the module JSON Web Token. And with that installed, let's add it to our Lambda function. And then let's use it to go ahead and create our JWT token that we want to send back as part of our response. As you can see here, we're creating a JWT token by giving it a payload. Uh, with JWTs, you can add a payload of data to the JWT that can be read by the client or by uh, other services down the line. And we're just going to add the person's username here. And then we use the token that's generated with the JWT sign process and add that as a response in our body to our request. Because we have a response here already, uh, this 200 response here doesn't necessarily make any sense. This will only be hit if we don't have a successful response. So we probably want to just return an error response. And in this case, it'll probably, we're going to use a 404 because that would mean that the user item was not found. And we can remove the body for that because the 404 basically means what we want to tell it. In this case, our login function is now complete. We have everything we need from retrieving the user record from the DynamoDB table. Uh, confirming that there is only one item, comparing the passwords, generating the JWT that we need as a token for future API requests, and then a response back uh, to our user. Let's go ahead and deploy this login function and, and give it a test. Before we do that, let me fix my quick typo here. And let's go ahead and test that. Now that our response is uh, complete, I've got a token that is created here using our JWT uh, sign function. And in the payload, I want to add the username as this will then be accessible to the front end as well as other API calls in the future. But as part of the sign process, we need to add a, a secret value that only we know so that we can decode this payload later. Uh, this is being done uh, using an environment variable. So in our serverless.yaml file, we need to create this environment variable. And here we're going to use a feature of Serverless Framework Pro to add a parameter to help us store the secret. What this means is we can now store this JWT secret in a central, uh, configure, in a central location for configuration purposes so that it's not stored in our Git repository as this is not secure. So let's go ahead and add that to our project now in the dashboard. Here in our dashboard, I'm looking at our deployment profiles and I'm going to go to my dev profile. And I need to add an additional parameter to that. And I'm going to make some random key here. I'm also going to encrypt this key so that it's not visible uh, to the naked eye. And now I'm going to add it. And my new uh, parameter is successfully added. What adding this param means is that at deployment time, this string here will be replaced by the value stored in the JWT secret parameter that I added in our dashboard. And if I happen to switch to a production profile, I can add a different JWT secret for production. I could make it a longer secret to make it more secure. I can do things that are different to develop an environment thanks to the differentiation between my profiles. So let's go ahead and deploy our uh, Lambda function to our service and give it a good test. With our function now deployed, let's go ahead and grab the call request so we can test this. Again, I'm gonna do this by going to my dev instance going to subscriptions and under login user post, I can now find the call request and just copy that. And on the CLI, I'm going to run my command. I needed to add the content type application JSON again. And of course I need to send some data with this request so that I can authenticate something. Now that I run it, you can see I get my token response back. This is exactly what we want to see for a successful service. Let's see what happens if I send the wrong password. I also want to add the option to see a response. I get my response, but now let me make the password incorrect. You can see I get my 404 request. 